Have you ever cloned a Git repository to your computer before actually reading and understanding the code? I mean, of course, I have. It's way easier to understand the code and look through it in my IDE than it is to do it in GitHub. And I mean, it's not like it could actually like set up a hook when I clone it. You have to do that locally yourself. And even if it did, it's not like it would execute right after I like pulled the repository, right? Uh, right? On May 14th, 2024, Git posted about a critical security vulnerability in Git. You can see the affected versions and patched versions here. I'm not going to read all those, um, but I will include links to all these things we go over in the description. Basically, this vulnerability took advantage of case insensitive file systems and symlinks. So by having in a, in a system like Mac OS or Windows, you're able to use symlinks to redirect a submodule that's getting pulled down into the .git directory, which allows code execution. So uh, on May 19th, uh, a researcher posted a write-up of how they reverse engineered the uh, fix that Git put into place. And he was able to go through and understand how they actually fixed it so that he could use that knowledge to then create an actual malicious or malicious uh, repository that could allow us to kind of see how it works and play around with it. So in this repository, you can see that there is a symlink here, and this symlink points to .git, and it's a lowercase a, right? And then if you look up here, you'll see there is a submodule that points to a commit over at this other hooks repo that we'll look at. And if we go into git modules, this points to the path of a modules x, right? Remember, a is a symlink, and it's lowercase, but because of the case and sensitivity, this is actually, it thinks that A is going to be Git, right? So now if we go over here, we can see the hooks repo. And this is the submodule that is being pulled into that other repo. And all this holds is, is a post checkout file, which is one of Git's many hook uh, options that you can use. And it just writes them always here into temp pwned and pops a calculator. So Let's look at how, let's kind of diagram this out to see if we can understand this a bit better before we dive into the threat and some of the detections. I tried to make this diagram, hopefully make this make more sense, but basically you have the victim host and that user does a git clone recursive to that git RCE repository, any right repository that's, that's using this malicious activity. So they, they clone that recursively and this git RCE repo like we were talking about has a symlink of a to .git and the git module is set up pointing to a modules x. So it pulls that down and then git knows because you did a recursive, okay, now I need to do a, a submodule update. So it goes and grabs the submodule from the hooks repo, which is, and it's pointed to y hooks post checkout. And it pulls that down to this machine. And then there's a checkout that pulls the exact commit that's wanted. And I'm pretty sure that checkout is what actually triggers that post checkout hook which then executes the post checkout script, you know, puts a almost here in the temp pwned and pops a calc. So it's a very simple um, exploit here, but basically you can get remote code execution just by crafting a malicious repository and getting someone to recursively clone it. So this is, this is why it's important, right, to read these and understand how these things work before cloning different repositories. I mean, I definitely need to get better about that, but. Um, luckily it's patched, but there's still an, an opportunity for this to be used in, in your environment. So it's something to good, good to keep an eye on and potentially detect on. And we'll get into some detection opportunities here in a second. So we took this repository and we um, created a threat for it. This is the landing page in our platform that kind of breaks down this threat. It gives you some information, some intelligence, uh, different threats that we have created. So we did one with a local repository, one with a remote. Uh, we have some detections curated in here so that you can actually go through and utilize those and hunt them in your environment. Uh, and then we have an attack script uh, to execute this in your environment as well. So the threat, you can see, I mean, there's not really much to see in the threat, right, from a visual perspective because it's all happening in the background. It's just you see git bash being used, ran as administrator, and 
then the git clone happening recursively, which then pulls that down, calc gets popped. Um, one thing that is, is good to know, right, is it needs to be that, that command window that's executing that git clone command needs to be ran as administrator, and symlinks, again, need to be enabled in your git install. And again, I'm pretty sure by default when you install git, symlinks are disabled, but um, it'd probably be good to check if you're running an older version of git that you have those disabled just to make sure. First detection we'll go over here is a hook getting created by git.exe. This really should never happen because hooks need to be created locally by users. That's how it's designed. Uh, if, if hooks are included in a repo for other users to set up, they wouldn't be in the .git folder. They would just be in the, the, the repo and then there'd be instruction for that user to configure the hooks to work. Uh, so if git is actually creating the file, one of these uh, hook uh, scripts, definitely is suspicious. So you can see in the log, this hit on the remote repo threat that we created where git.exe is the process and the target file is in that .git folder and it's in that hooks post checkout folder. So this is definitely suspicious. You should not see this happen. The next detection we'll look at is hooks getting executed by git. And so this is similar to the last one. You'll see all these different hooks that we listed in here, but the parent process name is git in this case. If we look at the log, you'll see that the parent process of git and there's the command line where bash is executing the post checkout hook and you'll see some different commit hashes. And if we go actually down to parent command line, we can see the commit that triggered this. And so this is that commit that we talked about in the diagram, right? This is the commit that was happening upon cloning, recursively cloning the repository. It was set for that submodule to specifically check out this commit hash. So kind of interesting that you can break it down there. This next detection is just one layer deeper than the last one. It's looking at where calc was actually being executed. So this is, again, this time it's showing bash as the parent uh, image and the parent process name. Uh, and the command line is showing that same command as before, the bash executing the post checkout script uh, with those commit hashes. But in this case, the process name is calc, right? So this is when it's actually going through that post checkout script and popping calc on the system. So these are just three of the detections. There's several more in there, but these are three specifically focused on um, a remote repo uh, having this, using this vulnerability. So it's, it's pretty interesting to uh, dig into these. Definitely suggest hunting them and, and logging into our platform to check out some of the community content surrounding this that you can play with. I appreciate you watching the video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Any suggestions for future videos? Again, leave a comment. Uh, subscribe if you liked it thumbs up, bell, all the stuff. If you want to get access to this content, feel free to sign up for a community account. There'll be a link in the description and you have tons of content you can access in our platform. Um, if you're a subscriber, you can just one click hunt. If you're not, you can still copy out a lot of these detections and utilize them in your environment. So I definitely encourage you to go check that out. Until next time, have a good one.